Father, we thank you. The immortal God, invisible God. A God without a beginning, a God without an ending. An unchanging God, an unhasting God. We glorify you this morning. Thank you once again for the last Sunday of this year. Thank you for seeing us through all the other Sundays of this year. Almighty God, even as you come to encourage ourselves at this time from your word, I pray that you speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Let your word inspire us. Let your word empower us. Let your word release the strength and the grace that you need for the journey into the new year in Jesus' name. Let your name be glorified. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's be seated. God bless you. I was believing God for the message that we should encourage ourselves with in this last Sunday of, the, of this momentous year. Given everything that has happened. And God continually told me, my children have every cause to thank me for the journey of this year. He said, my children have every cause to thank me. And so from there, uh, I believe that that is what the good Lord will have me to speak about. It may not be a Thanksgiving Sunday. I know Thanksgiving Sunday may be still the next Sunday, but God says if you start this difficult year with Thanksgiving, it's only good if you end it with Thanksgiving. Turn your Bibles therefore with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse number 16. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse number 16 all through to 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. May the Lord that blessing to the reading of his word. Once again, I want to welcome and congratulate each and every one of us because we made it. Your family made it. Your children made it. To the end of this very difficult year in the annals of human history. You saw the first Sunday and by God's grace, you are alive to see the last and the 52nd Sunday. Glory be to God. Now listen, um, a pandemic that we never thought about. In the last Sunday of last year, swept through every continent and countries of the world. It has infected about 80 million people. About 44.8 million have recovered. And about 30 million are in the hospital wards today, as we speak. And about 1.7 million people have died. Imagine that. Just think about that. In the U.S. alone, 19 million cases of infection have been reported. And about 332,000 have died. So if you are me, if you are alive, to come before the Lord this morning, it is only good and fit for us to celebrate the goodness of our God. To thank him. You know, Jesus said something very profound in the book of Luke chapter 13, verse number 4. Speaking to the disciples. He said, listen. Uh, in Jerusalem that day, he said the 18 people upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and they all perished. Do you think they were worse sinners? He said, no. So, believe, be, be, beloved, I want you to know that you and me, our being alive today, it's not because we are superhuman beings. It's not because we are super righteous. And those who have died, it's not because they were worse sinners. And we are not saying this to, you know, to, 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 to take anything away from all the pains that the family have been going through. But we are just saying this to let us know, to remind us that of the Lord's mercies alone, according to Lamentations chapter 3, verse number 21, we have not been destroyed because his message has not fed over us. Hallelujah. So, situation around us today, beloved, 
cause for each and every one of us alive to give thanks. We have every cause, every justification to give thanks, every rationalization to give thanks, every ground to give thanks, and every basis to thank our God. Now, while we go through what we go through in life, especially the unpleasant experiences, what should be our attitude? God says, tell my children, regardless of what they have been through or may be going through, they are receiving every cause to give me thanks. Some people will complain that their cup is half full. Some people will complain that their cup is half empty. But there are some people that have nothing at all in their cups. So let's think about that. Beloved, the constant message of God has been let my children continue to give me thanks through this pandemic. Look for a reason to thank me in the midst of the multitude of challenges, anxieties, and uncertainties. Our attitude is very important to our ultimate outcome. Now, let's look at Apostle Paul. And he's writing to, I mean, different uh, nationality, different group of people, different nations and churches during this time. So Apostle Paul, in diverse time and on diverse circumstances, to diverse people in a generation had this to say. To the Romans, Romans 12, 12 to 13, he said, rejoicing in hope. Be patient in your tribulation. Continue steadfastly in prayer. Distribute it to the needs of the saints. Give it to hospitality. In other words, even while you are going through what you are going through, your situation is not the worst. There are people going through worse challenges. So, don't close your eyes to them. See, distribute to their needs. Be a blessing to them. Be patient in your tribulation as you go through it. Rejoice in hope because there is a better tomorrow for every one of us. In Romans 5, 3 to 5 again, he said not, that not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope again, hope again. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. What is the bottom line? Again, rejoice, be patient, have hope of a better tomorrow. Hallelujah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, just, I just love the psalmist. He went through a lot of things. But each time he goes through whatever he went through, you always see, you all, you always see a statement of hope in whatever he says. Amen. So never allow the devil to put you in a situation of hopelessness. Amen. Aha. For me, there is no hopeless situation, except people who have got no place about their situation. So never allow the devil to put you in a situation that you become hopeless. Pastor told us this morning, sharing with us the worker in the workers' meeting, that if you do not give up in your frustration, your frustration will ultimately lead. If you don't give up completely in your frustration, and if you don't allow your frustration to take you out, your frustration will ultimately lead to your elevation. May that be the story for you in Jesus' name. I said, may that be the story for you in Jesus' name. Now to the Corinthian brethren, what did they have to say? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 17 to 18. He said, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Light affliction, pandemic affliction, which is but for a moment. It's working for us, a far more exceeding, an eternal weight of glory. Why we do not look at the things which are seen? Pandemic is a thing that can be seen. He said, we do not look at things that can be seen. But are the things which are not seen. For the things that we can see, they are temporary. They are subject to passing. And they shall eventually pass. He said, for the things which cannot be seen, they are eternal. Hope that you have in God is eternal. The joy that you say we should have is eternal. And I pray for you. Anything that you can see that is unpleasant in your life, in your situation, your circumstances, or around you and your family, all those things, they shall pass in Jesus' name. I say they are going to pass away in Jesus' name. And that which God has already ordained are going to be eternal for you. Your joy, your peace, your happiness. May God ensure it happens to you in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Now to the Philippians. He wrote to the Romans. It's the same thing. He wrote to the Corinthians. The same message. When he was writing to the Philippians. Now, this was a guy that was sitting in Roman prison. Because he was writing the epistle to the Philippians. 
while he was sitting in a prison. And he had this to say to people who supposedly were outside there. He said, rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4, 4. I say again, do what? Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. I say again, do what? Rejoice. In first Thessalon, in the, then in the book of Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7, he said, be anxious for nothing. Because he saw the law of people, they were so anxious about the law of things. So he now had to admonish them. He wrote that, he said, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. <laughs> Let your request be made known to God. He now concluded, and the peace of God, that's the only thing that can guarantee God's peace. And the peace of God, which no human being can explain or can understand, will guide your heart and mind to Christ Jesus our Lord. Believe me, because of my position as a pastor, I know a number of families that have been through ah, difficult stuff this year. That they literally were walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Either they were walking through it themselves, or one of their children walking through that valley of the shadow. Amen? Believe me, our family is not excluded. That's the honest truth. But when we go through what we go through as children of God, we are not to carry it on our faces as if the world is going to come to an end. No. Why? Because with Christian faith, with our, with our total trust in God, there is nothing that is impossible for God to do. Hallelujah. And believe me, God has already turned the situation around. And for every one who has been through, who is going through, any such situation that is unpleasant, there shall be a dramatic turnaround. In the name of Jesus. Now to the Thessalonians. I don't want to, because for every, almost for every one, in the New Testament, all the Christians in the various countries in the New Testament, Apostle Paul had the same message for them. The government of his message was about rejoicing, giving thanks to God. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18 that we read this morning. He said, just rejoice always. Pray without ceasing and everything. Just give God thanks. So choose to do the will of God. As I was speaking yesterday, choose to do the will of God. If you want to be complaining and grumbling about the situation, then you are doing something outside of the will of God. And I told us yesterday, there is nothing that complaining and grumbling does other than to prove that you can only hear correctly from the devil. Oh yeah. Because it's not the will of God. So if that is all that you are saying about, that means you are hearing clearly from something that is outside of the will of God. And who does things that is outside of the will of God? The devil. Why thank God? Why do I rejoice in the midst of what I'm going through as I begin to round up? Number one, because of the gift of life. Psalm 6, verse number 5. The psalmist says in there, there is no remembrance of you. That's why I love the psalmist. I went to preach in the church one day. The pastor said, after my message, ah, he said, he said in an hour, you, I mean, you gave almost about 30 references to the psalmist without looking at the psalms. He said, I saw that I saw you from verse 1 to verse, the, the last verse. You, you are just giving us everything. I said, because I just love the psalmist. I don't, another pastor look at me one day. Ah, he said, you love Apostle Paul? I said, yes, I do. Yeah, because these are people that, the two of them, if you look at the story of their life, they went through stuff. One started as a very, very bad guy. But for grace of God, and that was Apostle Paul. Very, very bad guy. So that's why we always speak about grace. Every chapter. Beginning of his book, end of his book is about grace. Grace of God be with you. Grace of God this, grace of God. I about, because he knew that it was only by grace that could have been saved. I about David. David started very well, but we all know the mess up that he did. <laughs> but yet, God says, this is a man that is still after my heart. So that's why I love their story so much. In that, there is no remembrance of you. David said, in Psalm 6, verse number five, he said, in the grave, who will give you thanks? If you want to look at the situation you are going to, to determine how you are going to relate. 
In Psalm 8, verse number 10. He said, with the dead praise you. Can the dead, can he sing your praise? Isaiah 30, verse number 18. Psalm 150, verse number 17. He said, the dead cannot praise you. The grave can't praise you. Those who go down to the pit, they cannot hope for your truth. Only the living as I am is going to celebrate you. Are you grateful to God that you are alive? And so in Psalm 150, verse number 6, the last verse of the book of Psalm, he said, let everything that has breath do what? Praise God. Do you have the breath of God within you? Can you shout hallelujah? <laughs> number two, because it's the only reason we are alive and standing today. The Bible says, Apostle Paul said, in the book of uh, 1728, of, uh, uh, I mean, the writer of the book of Acts, and that is Apostle Luke, in Acts 17, verse number 28, he said, indeed, you will live, and you will move, and you will have a baby. Some people are living, but they cannot move. Some can move, but they don't have their being. So he said, you will live, and you will move, and you will have our baby. The psalmist put it another way, Psalm 3, verse number 5. He said, I lay down, I slept, and I woke up, for thou God sustaineth me. Some people, they want to lie down, but they can't lie down. Some people, they can lie down, they want to sleep, but sleep as a looted them. Some people, they get to lie down, they get to sleep, but they don't get to wake up. Not because of anything, they just died in their sleep. Have I said that before? The answer is yes. Oh, yeah. Remember one of our very lovely sisters, when our church started, and it was the first church administrator. It was the first church, uh, church administrator that I had, working there half, half, half a day, because I just said I needed somebody to volunteer when the church started. I needed somebody to be following up with people who came to the church on Sunday because I just love administration. Because once you have good administration in place, oh, progress is a question of time. Amen. So and this is a volunteer, and then we were just paying her token that after he has gone to work in the nice lead. She will come to the church. We got for about four hours there. So she got married and then relocated outside of this environment. Came back from work one day, took care of the children. They, 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 she worked overnight and then went to the room to lie down to pray before she goes to bed. And that was how she passed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was nobody could explain it. Nobody. Nobody could explain it. His mercy sustained us. Lamentation 321. So we who are alive are no better than those who have gone. Luke 34. 4 Samuel 2 9. He said, By strength shall no man prevail. By not by strength, but I put prevail. And I pray, by God's strength alone, we shall continually prevail in Jesus' name. Number three, why we have to give God thanks? Because he has been our Alpha and our Omega in the journey of this difficult year. You saw the first Sunday, and by God's grace and mercy, he has brought you to the last Sunday of this year. Revelation 1, 8, 11, Revelation 21, 6, Revelation 22, 13, that God, Jesus consistently said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Glory be to God. Number four, because in between the journey, the enemy did everything to take you down and take you out. Take your children down and take them out. But God delivered you. You dodged the bullet. As one of my children said, he said, I dodged the bullet by God's grace. Now, there's somebody that I saw the last, the last week, I think it was about the second week of March, or the, the first week of March, that I saw him. I went to, I went to, uh, the person is working, is a friend, working with, uh, with, uh, with Auto Magic, with, brother, with our beloved brother, brother Michael Adekoda. And so, I, I was there in March, early, I think the first week of March. And the time I go, you know, we will joke, you know, you know, discuss things all here and there. Lovely brother. And uh, so, but because of COVID and all of that, I, I watch where I go. Amen. Uh -huh. So, because you have to, if, if, if you are, if you are a surname, if you are a Christian as follow Russia, in other words, I give this one to God to watch over. You must not now begin to pray with, uh, play a game of Russian roulette. Amen? You, uh, yes, you must not begin to, you know, put a head in your load and then be crossing a highway, a public highway. Amen? 
because they are so, don't expose yourself to risk and danger. That's what that proves me. Uh, I don't want to finish the tongue, amen, so that I don't confuse a lot of people. Glory be to God. So I don't really, so I have not seen him since that time. But somehow I had to take somebody to, to, to brother, to, to brother, to take that shop during the week. I had to take somebody to go and do something, not about cars, but something, uh, something that has to do with some other things. And so we got there. And so they, he said, ah, he said, Pastor, I've, I did, I've not heard from you since March. I said, yeah, that was when COVID started. I said, so everybody, I just, I, I just say wherever I need to go, I go to where I need to go. Oh, he said, oh, dad, don't, no wonder. He said, but did the, the Maji not tell you? I said, tell me about what? He said that uh, how my daughter died. Uh -uh. I said, really? He said that God didn't tell you that I also caught COVID. Oh, I said, really? He said I was in the hospital for three weeks. My daughter was also hospitalized because she also was got infected with COVID. I made it out of the hospital at, after three weeks. But my daughter that was 17 years old died. And she went into his drawer. And he brought out the picture carried in the, the Dallas Morning News of the, of the, of the, of the, of the poor girl. I said, oh, okay, we had the news. We saw the, but I never knew. Going to Lancasa High School. You now want to start telling me that uh, I'm alive today. You may not say with your mouth, if you're, the way you carry on, if you are carrying on as if you are the Lord of your life, you are the Alpha, the Omega of your life, go and think about it twice again. I'm not talking of a 70-year-old, though. I'm talking of a 17-year-old girl. I said, I didn't know. You know that if I knew I'd have called you, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have gotten the message that calls to you, oh, he said, probably Majid forgot. What am I saying in essence? We have every cause to thank God. If you can think, you can thank. If you can be thoughtful, you can be thankful. Then between the journey of the year, it's been tough. But through God, we made it. Number five, regardless of the setback of this year, if you made it to the end, your future is worth looking forward to. Romans 8, 18. He said, we reckon that the affliction of the present moment are not worthy to the glory which lies ahead of us. May you step into that glory in Jesus' name. God has something wonderful in store for you and me if he has kept us alive in the midst of the difficulty around us. That means he has a reason for keeping us alive. Psalm 139, verse number 17. I mean, that this was just this particular psalm. It just continued coming to me since the beginning of this week. Psalm 139, verse number 17. He said, How precious are your thoughts towards me, O God? He said, The sum of them very great. Your thoughts towards me, your thoughts concerning my future. How precious are they, O God? He said, When I sum them to, together, they are very great. So, beloved, I don't know what you are going to, what you are being through. I want to encourage you. The best is yet to come for you. Your future is well worth looking forward to. And you shall step into that future in Jesus' name. And lastly, because every night time is always preceded by a morning time. Psalm 30, verse number 5. Weeping can only endure for a night. Surely, Joy comment in the morning time. Second Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. He said that our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of sorrow. Listen to this story. To let you know everything is for the good of children of God. Well, you may not know when you are going through it. Um, there is a, there is what you call a Bobuibu statue. Old Weibo statue in Enterprise City in Alabama today. I've given us this story before. Now, locals ravaged the entire, the entire place. Alabama, Alabama, Enterprise Alabama, several years ago. Now, the question is this. After COVID ravaged the entire place, some glory data came out of it for the entire community. Let me say this. If God permits locusts, in your land, is for a reason. If God permits pandemic, it's for a reason. If God permits your brook to dry up, 
as in the case of Elijah, in 1 Kings chapter 17, 8 to 16, it's not like God wants to kill you with hunger and thirst. He has a reason for it. Amen? If he permits the manna to cease, as for Joshua and the children of Israel, in Joshua chapter 5, verse number 12, he has a reason. It's not for you to die of hunger. The Bible says God permitted manna to cease because something was better than manna. They were now in the, in the, they were now in the promised land. Manna was meant to be wilderness food. But once they stepped into the promised land, something better than manna was there. It was meek and honey. And so I pray for you. This year could have been a wilderness year for you. As you step into the new year, you step into your season of meek and honey. I say you step into your land of meek and honey. You will no longer be eating manna for food. Every will satisfy you with meek and honey. In your business, meek and honey. In your career, meek and honey. Concerning your family, meek and honey. Concerning your ministry, meek and honey. Step into that season in the name of Jesus. So when God permits the manna to cease, it's not for you to get hungry and die of hunger. But because there is something better than manna. Can somebody say there is something better than manna? For three years, all cotton farmers went bankrupt in Alabama. Their finances were ruined because of the Bowibo locusts, which attacked their harvest for three years. In order to survive, they tried their hands on peanuts farming. And many became millionaires. Now this is what they said. They never knew that their land could be so good for peanuts. They erected the statute to the Bowibu in Enterprise, which is still there today. If you Google it, you will see the statute. They now said, without the Bowibu, we will never have become millionaire farmers through peanuts. Because we never knew our land was good for peanuts. Lastly, because, let me say this, whatever you have been through or may be going through, it could have been worse. God is the only reason why it has not been the worst. Left to the devil, devil never intend anything good for anyone. Oh yes, he's incapable of doing that. It's like you should start the year and not end it. It's like you should start your year on two cars and end it on a bicycle. But that will not be your story. In the name of Jesus. It's like your children that you have great hope on. That they should start their journey of life. And along the line, something accidental happened to them. That will not be your story in Jesus' name. It could have been worse but for God. It was Socrates, that philosopher that said it. If all our misfortunes were laid in one common heap, whence everyone must take an equal portion. Most people will be content to take their own part and depart. That assuming we heap all our problems in one common gift and everybody just take a part and go. He said, looking at everybody's problem, as individual will just they will be content to take the problem they are brought and go back with their problem. That in other words, if you know what another person is going through, you will not want to exchange your problem for another person's. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And don't forget what I said on the first day of our seven days of prophetic. That if you worry too much over your zero achievement in the journey of 2020, take a minute to think about and imagine those who achieved everything but were buried yesterday. Rise up on your feet. Do you have every cause to thank God? Do you have every cause to be excited about your future? Do you have every cause to be excited about the new year that is coming? Just lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you. Just say, Lord, I thank you. No other thing. Our starting prayer in the morning is to thank God. And our closing prayer for this service is also to thank God. Just thank God. We are not making any requests. We have just come to say, Father, we thank you for the journey of this year. 
Father, we have just come to say thank you for how you came through for us. We have just come, Father, to say thank you. We didn't make it by our power, not by our strength, not by our ability. We didn't make it, oh God, not by our intellect, but we made it because you came through for us. We return all the glory to you. We just return all the glory to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. And as you go into the rest of the journey of this week, occasion for thanksgiving will not cease in your mouth in Jesus' name. Occasion for God's glory will not cease in your family in Jesus' name. The last few days of the journey of this year shall be days of thanksgiving for you. Days of celebrating the goodness of God. Days of God's glory. In the name of Jesus. In thanksgiving, you will celebrate it to your new year. I said in thanksgiving with your entire family, you will celebrate it to 2021. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.